Greetings to all of you, and yes, I did update the intro. And by the way, thanks to all of you who bought merch yesterday. Do tell me how it looks in the comment section when you get it, by the way. I'm rather curious myself, but anyway. Uh, the wacky Civil War-esque drama over at the Daily Wire. Now, I imagine what some of you are thinking, Chew in a black woman. Sounds like they're set up to a joke, doesn't it? <laughs> but you, Spoon, you mischievous monarchist, you. You don't like either of these two, so why the hell are you talking about this irrelevant bollocks? An astute observation, good sir, and I'll tell you why. Because on here, we are governed by certain rules, and at any given moment, you will experience this. Yeah, pretty much that. And so we must appease the lords of binary. Uh, the machine ones, not the NPC kind, by the way. Oddly enough, the former can appear more human if AI is involved, but anyway. Where the hell was I going with this? Oh, right, yeah. The reason is because we must always juggle a handful of things here. Appealing to new people, keeping the ones we have, and not boring the ass off of either. And I better get to the point before I bore myself as well. More than I already have. Oh, and also, because I don't give a bollocks about either, I could be far more objective than many people who would simply straddle the line or say yay or nay to Team Owens or Shapiro. I could sit above the petty squabbles and cast judgement on everyone involved, fun times indeed. Now to give a TLDR, we have Ben Shapiro, prominent sort of frontman for the Daily Wire brand, and Canis Owens, who, let's be real, regardless of merit, is always going to appear as some kind of a token figure, thank you very much current political paradigm for that one. Now what caused this ruckus, I'm assuming most of you know by now, especially if you follow Ben Shapiro ever since the uh, scuffle over there in his land of loyalty. Jeez, I wonder why he was never quite the fan favoured with the America First crowd, but anyway. Uh, Candace expressed a more, let's say pro-America First sentiment with regards to the Euro demographic that has been relentlessly attacked by the media, by academia and the culture, and simply ask why is it that they get no protection or backing from anyone, but for some reason when the attack happens in a distant land thousands of miles away that most Americans can't even point to on a freaking map, we must all somehow declare our allegiance to a foreign horde. Which is fair enough, really. One should always have an allegiance to the land you live in above all. You want the wealth you contribute, or stolen rather because taxation is theft, to be used on your own, not sent abroad. Now, Canis went on Tucker and explained the situation rather well, I thought. She managed to conduct herself with a sense of grace, but still hit Ben with a couple of neat kidney shots with regards to his classless conduct. And as much as one may find Canis Owens as a dubious figure at best, we can still appreciate the finesse of her mannerisms in the moment, so well done to her there. Ben doesn't actually have much to do with the Daily Wire's day-to-day, -day, according to her anyway. He's not the CEO, he's over in Florida, and their operations are conducted in Nashville, Tennessee. So as is the case, there is obviously much more to the story than simply the handful of tweets which, as per usual, results in the Twitter sphere grabbing the popcorn and slushies and commencing the cheerleading. Though I will say, the lunacy of Shapiro does make me believe there is much credibility to Owen's disputes. I will say though, I do like that she had a go at the current political paradigm herself, saying that there is far too much polarization, which causes any capacity for nuance to dissipate, because if you aren't explicitly stating a condemnation for any side, the frothing at the mouth spastics will instantly assume you're batting for the opposition, which is spot on, that is definitely a real thing. We've become so warped by the petty stupidity of democracy's faction wars, which inevitably creates these sub-factions that's based around personas and people. And sometimes it takes a despotic supporting utensil to point out few people, if any, can discern simply the conduct and not get suckered into the arsehole that is online personalities. What I do find fascinating though, separating a spat of its personalities because the drama aspect is boring and we have far more important things to be concerned about, is it's a very openly visible manifestation of a certain sentiment that's felt by a lot of the public, especially on the right. One that I imagine, for obvious reasons, uh, certain people are a tad reluctant to express, shall we say? That being, why the hell are we sending millions and billions of dollars to this foreign entity that, for all intents and purposes, offer no value to the American taxpayer whatsoever? Pretty much due to a powerful lobbying apparatus and that's about it. And regardless of what a Professor Mearsheimer says, that is just bribery, illegal or not. It is unethical and it is immoral. The visceral gut reaction from many a so-called conservative personalities, meh, really did separate the weak from the chaff, so to speak, revealed who are the actual nationalists and who are the snakes in the grass. Stark contrast to the previous foreign policy mishap when it was Ukraine and Russia, when it became more and more obvious the Russian bear was always going to win that one, 
public sentiment slowly shifted as more and more questions were being asked. And many people on the right were expressing skepticism of America's, well, let's be honest, yet another idiotic foreign policy blunder. Oh, but fast forward to the latest one and certain people lost their bloody minds. And yes, I will get to that one soon, don't you worry. Now they suddenly feel the need to throw money into this furnace for some reason and we are escalating this. Why? So evidently, the corruption of the system is not one you have a problem with, really. You just want the corruption weaponized for your endeavors. How very honest indeed. Which brings us neatly to Benny Boy over here, and I think I can speak for many people when I say, fuck Ben Shapiro, he is a nakedly obvious two-faced liar. They say that I want America to fight wars for Israel. Nope. Nope. First of all, Israel can take care of herself. If Israel is forced to the wall, the possibility of nuclear exchange is extremely high. That is why it is very important that the United States provide the material aid to Israel. I think to, to think that that's why the existence of the state of Israel is the single greatest guarantor of my loyalty to the United States, frankly. Right, because Israel exists, that means the United States is going to be a more welcoming place for me because Israel is there as a backstop in case anything should go wrong. A case in point, so his loyalty to the US is contingent on her sending endless amounts of dosh to a country he doesn't even live in. How wonderful indeed. Again, I can't imagine why the America First crowd was always kind of skeptical of his character, and that skepticism has now paid dividends. When it all kicked off, the man's Twitter feed was wall-to-wall -wall propaganda, and he got even more upset when people asked him for verification, seeing as he was retweeting just about anything that served his cause, a move which visibly irritated him to no end, which admittedly was rather amusing. It got so excessive to the point, I think I even tweeted at him, how do you even have time to do your job? I remember in the wake of the attack, him and Boring had a very visible spat with Andrew Tate on Twitter, and he pulverized him to the moon. Andrew and his brother, meanwhile, had a very measured, sensible approach to the realities of politics and power in the regime, versus the emotionally driven wankers wearing the goggles of warmongering. The moment they brought Andrew's past into the mix, they lost. So much for facts don't care about your feelings, huh, Ben? The second the facts of political realities rears its ugly head, you get your fifis in a twist. Here we have all these political pundits, personalities, and voices who are getting schooled by a man they're desperately trying to discredit with claims of sexual misconduct, which again has bugger all to do with the objectivity of his assessment. The whole situation was just surreal. Which begs the question, why the hell does anyone even listen to Ben Shapiro anyway? As best as I can tell, and this is my assessment of him as a character, he gained much prominence during the Gamergate year, so he has this auxiliary kind of overlap with the cultural side of the right, which allows him to maintain this ground of personality as opposed to just being the pure political pundit, even though that's very much his bread and butter. It gives him a lot of leeway with the majority, which is entirely unearned in my opinion. He made his name smacking around college students, and considering how stupid that class of people really are, that's not exactly an impressive feat. When he was on the BBC with Andrew Neil, he got his ass handed to him without O'Neill breaking a sweat and stormed off in a hissy bitch fit. So I think we're done here. I appreciate your time. So All thank right. You well, so much. thank you for your time and uh, for showing that anger is not part of American political discourse. No. <laughs> ah, yes, the subtleties of English wit. Outstanding. If you were to look at his goals as a mainstream media pundit, it makes far more sense. He's not an honest actor with any shred of political astuteness. No, he's just a typical peddler of the regime like any other mainstream media talking it. Only difference is the platform is online rather than cable. If you were to contrast his political judgments versus, say, sticks, my good lord, the difference is night and day. The man is not politically perspicacious in the slightest. He's a complete idiot. He was wrong about Trump, he was wrong about the coup, and he was wrong about Russia. And when the Daily Wire turned into the DeSantis cheerleading squad, my good god, the cringe. I remember him being so smug when the media said he's more electable than Trump. <laughs> How did that one turn out for you, Ben? Couldn't possibly be because DeSantis went over to Israel to sign legislation now, could it? No, of course not. Around these issues, his political judgment gets clouded faster than a sex addict around a pair of perky norks. Don't be fooled by his age, people. In reality, Shapiro is just a younger, faster talking version of Mike Pence, a typical hawkish neocon. No more, no less. Cheers for watching, and once again, I apologize for nothing.